Hey gang, Mel here. So in this video, I'm going to answer the question that, uh, that was asked about what's the best way to set up your screen resolution before you actually start your screencasting. We'll talk about that here. Okay, so one of our students for the ScreenFlow course asked a great question about uh, he needed to set up a screencast for his ScreenFlow course and he wants to know what's the best way to define the screen resolution for his screen before he actually starts a screencasting. All right, so here's a here's the thing. So my recommendation is actually to set your display to uh, what your output dimensions are going to be. Now it can be the case though that you won't get the exact your display monitor might not provide those exact dimensions. So here's an example. So let's open up ScreenFlow here, and we will bring up. I did actually a couple of res, uh, couple of captures here. So here's this case where. We captured, we set the display at 1280 by 800. And the reason it's 1280 by 800 is because if you notice, as I'm coming along in here, when I started this presentation, you'll see that we go to the system preferences display and then we open up the display menu. And then here we have 1280 by 800 that's selected. If you'll notice though, really our output dimensions that we want is 1280 by 720. We don't have that in this particular monitor display here. Some monitors will have that as an option. So the point is, is you want to get as close to your output dimensions as you can. And here 1280 by 800 happens to be that, uh, as close to 1280 by 720 as we can get, okay? So, uh, so that's what we had selected here in this particular uh, video presentation here. So when you're done with the recording, you end up with this. So we're in the editing, main, editing portion here after we've done the recording now. So I captured this at 1280 by 800 when I set my display, all right? Now I'm in the editor for this particular recording that I, that I did here a little bit earlier. So because I started off at 1280 by 800, ScreenFlow will sense what the display resolution was that you used to capture it. And we can find this out, and you'll learn this in the course. So if you click into my ScreenFlow course, you'll be able to see some of these same things. We talk a, a lot about these also in the part about Lecture 4 where we have the ScreenFlow editor, and then also a little bit further down where you could record anything on your screen. We talk a lot about these, you know, how to set up for your... Uh, your dimensions and so on. And what you'll learn is that right over here in the ScreenFlow editor, you can click this little icon right here and that brings up your properties for your canvas. Your canvas is uh, right here is where ScreenFlow will have sensed what your screen resolution was, 1280 by 800 in this case. So even though you recorded at those dimensions, your output dimensions are going to be 1280 by 720, right? Because why 1280 by 720? Because those are really the uh, HD type dimensions that places like YouTube and Vimeo, anytime you have a high definition type display, uh, it's going to be pretty much 1280 by 720. And that's what I would recommend is your output dimensions. If you're a Udemy a, an instructor trying to post courses on, you know, video based courses on Udemy uh, or some of these other sites like that, 1280 by 720 is typically what they're going to want as well. So what we want to do is in that canvas, you want to set this as 1280 and then set this to 720. So even though you were forced by your display to record at 1280 by 800, what you want to set your canvas for is pretty much exactly what your output dimensions are going to be, which is 1280 by 720 in this case. All right, so once we do that, we'll click Apply. And now what you'll notice in our canvas is, see a little gray space down here at the bottom? Here's the handles, right? So this is the boundaries of our, um, of our video. But here's where, see this black area here? This is the dimensions of our canvas. So essentially what we have here is if we align the, ed the left and the right edges here, what we have here is a situation where you have a bigger video that fits into your canvas. So uh, not a problem. In most cases, what you'll be able to do here is essentially just, you know, just uh, move this up and down so your presentation is right smack dab in the middle. So let's get to the part of the presentation where we started the PowerPoint. All right? So this was a PowerPoint presentation in this case. And, um, and we made the PowerPoint or whatever it is that you're going to display, whether it's PowerPoint or you, maybe you're doing a tutorial on Microsoft Outlook or some other software, my recommendation is if you can, go ahead and expand that to fill the entire display, which is what we did here in this PowerPoint presentation. Okay, So we have a PowerPoint presentation in this case, and it did fill the entire screen. The thing is, is PowerPoint presentations come out of the box. They default to a what's called a 4-3 type of a ratio. That's why we have this letter box or this pillar boxing uh, along the left and right. So just real quick here. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. So if I was to just bring up a little whiteboard presentation here, if your output display is going to be something like this, 16 to 9, right? 16, what we call a 16 to 9 type of an aspect ratio. What that means is it's the relationship between the, the horizontal, okay? The relationship between the, the horizontal and the vertical, all right? In some cases, you'll have 1280 
1280 by 720 along the vertical here. And if you took this and you divided 1280 by 720, you'll get 1.78. As it turns out, if you also divide 16 divided by 9, you get 1.78. So it's really just a proportionality kind of a thing. And these 16 to 9 aspect ratios or these high definition type dimensions tend to be more rectangular. The thing is, in some, some things that you might record, like for instance a PowerPoint presentation, doesn't conform to 169. It conforms to something that's a little bit more, not less rectangular, it's more squarish actually. So it's called a 4 to 3 type of an aspect ratio. And these might be things like 1024, right, by 768 along the vertical. Okay, so 1024 by 768 type of a display would be a 1.33 type of a ratio. Um, if you divide it by 1024 by 768, you'll get 1.33. As it turns out, if you divide it 4 divided by 3, you'll get 1.33 as well, okay? So in any case, so let's say this is your video, all right? And so you have a 4-3 video, and you're trying to take that, and you're trying to fit it ultimately into 16 to 9 type of a display. What you end up with is this type of a situation where you have your video inside. That's my video there, right? You have your video inside the 16-9 display, but you'll have this extra space on the left and the right of it, okay? This blank space that's basically called pillar boxing, because they're kind of like these pillars, right? Pillar boxing, that's what that's essentially called. So that's a situation that we have when we finally, if we're recording, say, a PowerPoint presentation, which is a 4-3 type of a, uh, um, present, a display, and we're trying to show that into a 16-9 to 9 type canvas. Don't be put off by it. It's not a huge problem. All you need to really do is just make sure that uh, we're going to scale this up a bit. So I'm going to push the shift button and drag the bottom up part of that up a little bit. And basically what I'm trying to do is just align the part of the presentation that I want to show vertically in there. Now I do have this pillar boxing along the left and the right. If you're gonna show it in a 16-9 display, you almost kind of have to live with it, right? If you're recording a tutorial for some software, so like in this case, your uh, maybe Microsoft Outlook or something like that, uh, it won't be an issue because then your entire Outlook presentation or your software that you're showing will fill this entire screen. So this pillar boxing won't be an issue there. It only becomes an issue when you have something like PowerPoint that you're displaying in there. And there's a little trick that you can do. And again, we talk about this in the ScreenFlow course, but I'm just going to do the button combinations. But you can do something called cropping. See between when I selected the video here, right? So between the left edge most of the video and where it records some of this black, black spot. So it's sort of hard to differentiate between, a, between that and a canvas that also happens to be black. So let's go ahead and change a canvas color to something that's a little bit more branded, let's say. So let's say your brand is blue or you just like, you just like blue as a background color. Now you can kind of see the, the differentiation between the video and the canvas here, right? So if we want to get rid of this extra space because it's a PowerPoint presentation that we're showing and we don't want that kind of a distraction, what you can do here is you can basically crop the left and the right edges and then we'll crop the right side over there and then maybe scale this in just a little bit. So now you have a little bit, uh, you know, more of a, a nice presentation that sits on top of a background. If you like, what you can then do with that is it's also go into the video property section over here and click the shadow, maybe put a little bit of a shadow there, maybe soften that up just a little bit. And then now you have the ability to maybe move this around or animate or just keep it right smack dab in the middle. So that's one way you can actually sort of dress up a 4-3 presentation that sits inside your 16 to 9 canvas, right? So, uh, but again, this won't be an issue if you have software. It's a software demo that you just filled up the entire screen. Then essentially this 16 to 9 display will be your entire uh, software presentation. So the, 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 the steps basically were uh, you want to set your canvas you want to set your screen display to your output dimension. So in this case, 1280 by 720, or as close to it as you can before you start doing your screencasting. Then you do your screencast recording. And then when you get into the editing stage, then what you want to do is make sure that you set your canvas to exactly the output dimensions, in this case, 1280 by 720, and then just do some of the adjustments on your uh, subject. Okay, hope that helps. This is Mel, Screencasting Wizard. Talk to you later.